Hey guys, I was excited to make a video response to Sarah and P's evil eye video. This is a very interesting subject and I wanted to approach it from a uh, perspective of my own cultural background and how the evil eye is used. Um, it's pretty much very similar to many other ancient cultures. Um, I wanted to show you some of the accessories that I've got and to talk to you a little bit about it. So the first one here I've got is a Turkish evil eye. It has a hole here, very simple. It is generally hung on the wall to protect the home from the evil eye. This one is painted around in gold. So the idea of the evil eye from uh, from what I've known since I was a little kid is that um, the evil eye can come through anybody even through yourself and it can affect anyone or even anything so you might not even intentionally know that the evil eye is carried within you or that you're attracting this evil uh, evil spirits uh, by saying something to somebody else and this saying could be something that's uh, simply a compliment like if you're walking on the street and if you see a woman with a baby I could say to the woman oh you have a beautiful baby and then she has to protect her child from the evil eye because the fact that I gave that compliment to the child could attract the evil eye to do something bad to the child. So then by protecting, the, how you would protect the child is you, you would um, uh, make them wear jewelry or you would hang something around their baby carriage or yeah, bracelet or something. anything. It could be jewelry, it protects the home from the evil eye so that your home is protected, nothing happens to the home. And for things like objects, it's kind of like, um, for example, uh, yeah, it's like knocking on wood or throwing salt over your shoulder. It's, it's sort of an antidote to the negative spirits, the negative spirits that are lurching around. So you, you want to cast them aside. And the, the evil eye represents a protection for those energies that we don't want interfering in a bad way with our lives. So very, uh, it's an ancient superstition, I guess you could say. Um, I find it very fascinating how different cultures from all over the world share very similar ideas from the past. And um, the turquoise color, which is generally associated with the evil eye, as you can see here. And as you can see, in the earrings that I'm wearing here, which are very, very tiny little evil eyes hanging. Uh, the color turquoise got its name from turquoise stone. Here is a turquoise, here's a, here is a ring that I got from Iran. It's a very antique silver ring, and unfortunately it's kind of blurry here, but it's got a turquoise stone in the center. And I'm also wearing a turquoise pendant from Iran. By the way, all the things I'm going to show you are from Iran, with the exception of one, which is from Turkey. But we call it the Turkish evil eye because it, it came from Turkey. In fact, the name turquoise from the turquoise stone comes from Turkey. And back in the day when the Turkish merchants uh, were the first ones who introduced uh, turquoise stones in markets uh, to to Europe the first country it came to was Germany and the Germans called it Turkischer Stein which literally means Turkish stones and then it went um, to France and the name in French is Pierre de Turquoise which is uh, stone uh, stone of Turkey in translation so similar and actually, and then that's how it got its name. So the color turquoise, obviously, is the same color as the turquoise stone. And the reason why it came in the turquoise, um, in the evil eye, 
the color went into the evil eye is uh, because the turquoise stone was considered a lucky stone and a very protective stone. And the stone itself was worn to protect you from the evil eye. So um, the Turks called the stone Feyruz, which means lucky stone. The Persians also called it Firuze, which is similar. And um, the Persians also, uh, they, they really knew its value for protection against the evil eye and protection against injuries and any, anything bad happening. So they usually hung stones you know, on their horses or in their house, just stones of turquoise for protection. And that's how it got its its color. Its color turquoise went into the design of the Turk, the the evil eye, and then the design of the evil eye kind of changed through different cultures and took different shapes. Um, as Emily Dem, uh, uh, sorry Emily Dempsey, I was gonna say because it's a very good friend of mine, Sarah, and he said in her video that the turquoise is the color of the heavens, and that's very true. Actually, the Native Americans called the turquoise stone the stone of the heavens or sky stone. Very cool how totally different cultures have this connection. So I'll go back to showing you some of my some of my uh, amulets. This is I guess I, you would say an amulet. Amulet against protection. And then similar to this is something like this which actually had three and one of them is missing now. It, got lost. Both of these are from Iran. If you go to the Middle East, um, definitely in Iran and Turkey, you'll see these everywhere. You'll see them in people's homes, you'll see them in bazaars, you'll see all kinds of designs. You may see them as simple as this or as ornate and complex as this. This is a um, key holder that you hang on the wall and it's also from Iran and as you can see it's highly decorative it's got the evil eye in the middle um, oh I wanted to say that you could give the evil eye for objects so for example if I had this right now and if some if you said wow that's so beautiful well, I might drop it and break it, <laughs> but I won't in this case because it has that evil eye on it, so it's protected. But if it was something else, like a, a, a cup or a, a beautiful porcelain plate, and it fell, and, and if, I, if I dropped it and it broke, there you go. That's how you can give the evil eye to an object. You can also give the evil eye to yourself. You can think something about someone or say something, or you can even think something of yourself or say something of, about yourself. So exactly like the antidote that I was talking about, I could say to someone, um, I never get sick. And then maybe the next day I'll get sick. <laughs> so I gave, I, I attracted the evil eye to myself. However, you know, if I say knock on wood, or if I, if I'm wearing one of these, even the turquoise, then I'm protected. Getting back to my stuff, um, I have, by the way, if you go to any Persian person's home, you'll find lots of these so I, naturally I've got some. This is a pomegranate. I also got this from Iran. It's a it's a decorative pomegranate made out of clay and it's got two of these hanging, two of the same stuff. This is exactly what I'm wearing in my earrings that I also got in Iran many many years ago. Um, the pomegranate is a strong symbol, symbol in many cultures, and in Persian culture, it stands for fertility and life. And in ancient Greek mythology, it's the fruit of the underworld, and its seeds give life. I love that stuff. Okay, so yes, and I have one more here. I actually had a, a really beautiful pendant, but I couldn't find it. I don't know where it is, it's somewhere in my boxes. This is a uh, glass bead that I got from Turkey. And it's a bead that I made into a necklace myself. But you can get in Turkey, if you go to Turkey, if you've ever been there, there's heaps and heaps of this stuff everywhere that they sell, super cheap. Okay, so uh, yeah, and I'm gonna show you now uh, 
slightly different version of it that's that comes from Iran. And it's this here, which is a clay kind of um, pottery colored in turquoise. So this is not a stone. And I don't know why it has these holes, but that's how it's been for a very, very long time. And you don't see this in people's houses so much. This is more this is more traditional. Maybe you'll find it in small towns and peasant homes. So you've got three again, as all things come in threes. And this I made into a necklace, but it was just for hanging on the wall for your home protection. Um, you don't only find it in that that design. You could even just find it like this. A whole bunch of beads made and strung into something just like that and then just hang that for good luck for protection. So it's simply it's not even the, the stone. It's not even the turquoise stone. This is some kind of special clay, which I'm not sure what it is, and it's uh, painted in turquoise. So apparently that's enough and it has been enough to this. This is something special that they use only in Iran. Oh, this is nice. Maybe I'll make it into a necklace. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is only used in Iran, and different cultures have their own variations. So that was the Iranian one and the Turkish one. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Sarah, for making this video. Talk to you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.